The grid menu contains a variety of programs that are used to manipulate and display grid models in addition to some utilities that create solid or block models based on grid models. The report program creates a statistical summary of a grid model including minimums, maximums, average z-value, volumetrics, mean slope, and mean aspect. The histogram program provides a graphical summary of the cumulative frequency distribution of grid model z-values. The Krajewski gram program creates XY plots or scatter grams of observed z-values versus computed node values for corresponding locations in an existing grid model. The residuals program computes the difference between observed z-values and computed or predicted z-values within a grid model. The Multivariate Anomalies program provides an exploration tool for dealing with multiple spatial data sets. Given a list of grid models and weighting factors for various exploration parameters, this program creates a map and corresponding model that show where all of the parameters are statistically anomalous. The Normalize program recomputes the grid node values such that they range between a user-specified minimum and maximum. This filter is useful when looking for relationships between models that are expressed in different units. In this example, we have divided normalized geochemistry by normalized conductivity and highlighted areas where the two data sets correlate. The standardized program recomputes the grid node values such that they represent the standard deviations from the mean. When examining the new model, node values between 0 and 1 can be considered background. Values between 1 and 2 can be considered slightly anomalous, 2 and 3 are moderately anomalous, 3 and 4 are strongly anomalous, values above 4 are extremely anomalous. In this example, we have standardized two geochemical models and multiply them together to isolate areas where both chemicals are anomalous. The Grid and Grid Math program performs arithmetical operations with the grid node Z values in two existing grid files. Examples include adding thickness values in two isopat grid files to determine the total thickness of adjacent beds, subtracting the formation top elevations in one grid file from those of the next formation up to generate isopat model of that formation, multiplying a coal thickness grid file by a Boolean grid file representing favorable coal BTU values to generate a thickness model of acceptable areas only, dividing a grid model representing overburdened values by a grid representing a clay seam thickness to determine stripping ratio. The grid and constant math program performs arithmetical operations with the node Z values in a single grid model and a constant or a user-defined polynomial equation. Examples include adding or subtracting a constant to or from each node in a grid file representing surface elevations to correct for a measurement error, and converting a grid file with nodes representing elevations from meters to feet by multiplying the original grid nodes by a constant conversion factor. The density conversion program multiplies the grid cell volume, which is defined as the cell width times the cell height times the Z value or the thickness, by a constant representing density per unit volume to create a new mass grid. For example, if you have a grid model that represents the thickness of a particular formation and you want to determine its total mass, enter the density per volume unit of the rock type in question. The absolute program translates grid node values to their absolute or positive numbers. The resample program reads an existing grid model and creates a new model based on the current project dimensions. This is accomplished by essentially regridding the data based on a sector-based inverse distance squared algorithm. This tool may be used to resize grid models that are to be filtered against or run through mathematical operations with each other, or to resize a single grid model destined to be used to filter a solid model. The Boolean program transforms a grid model based on real numbers to a Boolean or true-false model. In this process, the z-values of nodes are set to 1 if their original z-values fall within a user-specified range. Otherwise, the z-values are set to 0 or false. These Boolean models can then be compared with other models using some simple math to determine areas of mutual agreement or disagreement. The Fill Sinks program removes closed depressions from a grid model by essentially filling the holes. There are several applications for this utility. Eliminating closed depressions from a grid model prior to creating a simulated drainage net. Cleaning up an oversampled grid model or other types of models that may have depressions caused by either the sampling method, such as LIDAR, or the gridding algorithm, such as inverse distance. Creating a model that can be subtracted from the original model in order to identify and estimate the volumes of depressions, such as sinkholes, excavations, and subsidence. The Limit program compares the z-value of each node of an existing grid model to the corresponding node in another or comparison grid model and reassigns lower high nodes to the values in the comparison grid. In this manner, you can, for example, constrain a stratigraphic surface to another stratigraphic layer or to the ground surface. You can invoke either a low stop or a high stop filter. The minimum area program reads either a Boolean or a conventional grid model and nullifies contiguous cells whose combined area is less than a user-defined area. This tool provides a means for eliminating exploration targets that are too small. The Polygon Clip program is used to set the grid nodes inside or outside a polygon to either a user-specified value or to the values defined within another grid model. A common application is to zero all of the values outside a polygon. For example, if the input grid represents ore reserves and the polygon represents a least boundary, the grid statistics will represent reserves only within the least boundary. The range program deletes high or low Z values from a grid file, reassigning them a user-specified constant. For example, you could use a high-stop filter to set all Z values above a user-defined threshold to a constant in order to correct for outrageously anomalous values and generate more meaningful grid statistics. Or, you could use a low-stop filter to set contaminant values below a harmful limit to zero in order to highlight areas requiring remediation. The round program 
reads z-values stored in a grid file and rounds them up or down based on a user-defined interval. The Smooth program averages the z-values within a grid model based on a user-declared filter size. The smoothing can be run one or more times in order to remove spurious noise within the grid model and to bring out regional trends. The Edit program is used to interactively and graphically edit the node values stored in a Rockworks grid model. The Grid to 2D Flow Map program reads a grid or surface model and creates a 2D map showing flow from high to low nodes with continuous lines thereby simulating a drainage network. The Grid to 3D Flow Diagram program creates a simulated three-dimensional drainage net based on an existing surface grid model. The Grid to Flow Vector Table program reads a grid, computes flow from high to low nodes, and stores the flow vector segments in a Rockworks Utilities datasheet. The Upgradient Area Map program reads a grid model and creates a map which represents the number of grid nodes that are upgradient from each node. The Grid to Aspect Map program computes the changes in grid node z-values, such as elevations, concentrations, etc., between neighboring nodes noting the direction from 0 to 360 of downhill slope. The resulting direction or aspect values are stored in a new grid model with options for generating a 2D map, 3D surface, and a grid statistics report. The Grid to Down Gradient Vector Map program reads a grid model and creates a 2D map containing small arrows at each grid node pointing downhill. Arrows may be scaled and or color-coded according to steepness of slope. The Grid to Rows Diagram program computes the changes in z-values, typically elevations, between neighboring grid nodes, noting the direction from 0 to 360 of steepest change in order to create a rows diagram to summarize the directionality of the aspect bearings, i.e. the dip direction, or of the corresponding structural bearings, i.e. the strike direction. The Grid to Second Derivative Map program computes the changes in z-values within a grid model in order to determine the slope at each grid node. It then computes the change of these slope values and plots the result as a contour map. These second derivative maps highlight areas where the slope is changing, such as where a steep wall meets a valley floor. These inflection points also highlight the crests of anaclines and the troughs of synclines. The Grid to Slope Map program reads a grid or surface model and computes the changes in z-values, such as elevations, concentrations, etc., between neighboring nodes. The resultant slope values are stored in a new grid model with options for generating a 2D map, 3D surface, and a grid statistics report. The Grid to Stereonet program reads a gridded surface model and computes the changes in elevations between neighboring nodes, i.e. the slope, noting the direction or aspect of steepest change. It then creates a Stereonet diagram to summarize the directionality of the aspect bearings, or dip direction, and the steepness of the slopes, or the dip angle. The Grid to Strike and Dip Symbols program reads a grid model containing surface elevations, computes the slope and direction at each grid node, and creates a map showing strike and dip symbols at each grid node. The Grid to Upgradient Vector map reads a grid model and creates a map containing small arrows at each grid node that point uphill. Arrows may be scaled and or color-coded according to the steepness of the slope. The Movement Analysis Program is used to determine the direction, inclination, distance, and velocity for X, Y, Z, and time-based data. A typical application involves a slope in which survey stakes have been repeatedly surveyed over time. This program will generate velocity data that allows the user to contour the speed of slope movement. The Slope Aspect program is used to compute the changes in z-values such as elevations, concentrations, etc. between neighboring nodes in an existing grid file and store these in up to three new grid files. A slope grid, which contains the change or slope between node z-values expressed in degrees, percent, or radians. An aspect grid, which contains the direction of the slope expressed in azimuth degrees. And a second derivative grid, which contains the change in slope, the slope of the slope grid, to illustrate bends. The Trend Surface Analysis Report Program performs a polynomial trend surface analysis on a selected z-value column in the datasheet and lists the correlation and residuals for first through six order polynomials in a report. This report can help you to determine what trend order to select when creating a trend surface grid model, and it can help you to isolate regional anomalies by computing trend residuals. The Trend Surface Residuals Program is used to perform a trend surface analysis on a selected z-value column and compute the residuals for a selected polynomial order, representing the difference between observed z-values and trend z-values. The residuals are stored in a datasheet column of the user's choice. The Morph Program generates a series of contour map images, and optionally the intermediate grid models, given two end-member grids. The images may be shown in rapid succession in order to create a movie depicting changes in groundwater contamination, glacial melting or growing, subsidence, volcanic swelling, pre-earthquake bulging, and in-situ leach monitoring. The Mosaic program combines two or more side-by-side -side or overlapping grid models into a single grid model. This can be used to combine models of adjacent projects or imported grid models. The Initialize program creates a new grid model that represents a flat plane with a user-defined elevation or a dipping plane based on a user-defined orientation. The Import program reads an existing set of gridded data stored in ASCII, USGS Digital Elevation Models, ESRI, Geosoft, and Surfer formats, and translates the data into a Rockers-compatible grid file format. 
This tool also imports raster or bitmap images such as JPEG or BMP and translates them into a grid format. The export program converts RockWorks grid models into a variety of formats that are compatible with other products that analyze and or display gridded data. The LiDAR XYZ to Grid program imports XYZ files created from LiDAR or light detection and ranging equipment and generates a grid model that represents the Z values, typically surface elevation, by simply setting the node values equal to the LiDAR values within the corresponding cell. Because of the huge number of points in a typical LiDAR file, the program is file-based, meaning that it does not load the points into memory. The Grid to Profile program creates a single profile cut through a grid model for display as a line profile diagram. The Unified Field Theory solution combines the fundamental forces of physics and elementary particles into a single field. Specifically, this program unifies the general theory of relativity with electromagnetism, thereby providing a simple explanation for quantum mechanics. The Grid Defense program plots three-dimensional profiles depicting profiles based on an existing grid model, i.e. the intersection between the ground surface and the fence panel. The Grids to Stratigraphic Fence program creates a fence diagram based on a list of existing grid models that represent the top or superface and base or subface of each unit. The Grids to Stratigraphic Model program is used to create a 3D stratigraphic model based on a list of existing grid models. This program is designed for two types of applications. One, users who have created their grid models within other applications, such as ModFlow or Surfer, and wish to use Rockworks to create stratigraphic or hydrostratigraphic diagrams. Two, users who have created their grid models within the Borehole Manager portion of Rockworks, but need more flexibility in dealing with stratigraphic relationships, e.g. special manipulations within the grids. The Grids to 3D Stack program plots multiple flat grids in 3D space for the purpose of visual comparison. These grid models can represent any real number of values such as geochemical concentrations, elevations, porosity values, quality readings, you name it. The Grids to Stratigraphic Logs program will define or redefine the contacts within existing stratigraphic logs based on a list of one or more stratigraphic surface models. Sample applications include interpolating elevations from missing contacts within borehole files, such as lost circulation intervals, and predicting or estimating what a log might look like before the borehole is drilled. The Grids to Solid program is used to create a 3D stratigraphic solid model based on a list of existing grid models that represent the top or superface and base or subface of each unit.